<laughs> so, welcome to Developer Commentary. I'm Mike Stout. I'm Tony Garcia. And we're about to play another one of my levels. And uh, just to give you an idea of what to expect from this level, uh, all the other levels that we worked on at the time I thought were good. Okay. And have since come to realize that they're bad. <laughs> okay. When I worked on this level... Wait, did you say we, by the way? What? You said we. I think I'm you sorry, I meant you. I did mean yeah. me. Uh, all the levels I worked on, I thought, were, I thought were good at the time. Found out they were bad. This level, at the time, I thought was dog shit. Uh, so while we were working on this level, I was very, 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 very... And when was the last second. time you played this level? And just, uh, oh... Uh, before the game came out. Okay, so we're looking at maybe seven, eight years. Yeah, it's been seven or eight years. And to give you an idea of why this level, why I think this level is so shitty, I spent all my energy making that that other facility with the squirrels in it uh -huh. as shitty as it was. <laughs> so, so we're in for a new world of crap here. So I'm looking forward to this. Uh, sort of like you look forward to dental surgery. Which is to say very much. Oh, yes. Uh, all right, so there's a segment over there and there's a segment over here. Um, oh, God damn it, Tony. <laughs> I say we do swing shots first because swing shots are always fun. How badly could you have screwed up a swing shot segment? That's a levitator segment. Oh, well, then probably a lot you probably <laughs> screwed that up. All right. Um, yeah, let's do it. Why not? So, uh... oh, oh, you better put on that swing shot. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is when you just fired the rocket because you thought you had the swing shot on. That was a good feature that we put it in up your arsenal to auto equip the swing shot. <laughs> what could go wrong in a swing shot segment, he said. I didn't say what could go wrong, I said, how not fun could you have made it? Or maybe oh. I said what you could go wrong, but what I meant <laughs> was how not fun could it be. All right, let's put on the. Is it on here? Okay. Um, so for Ratchet and Clank developer commentary, I'm Mike Stout. <laughs> I'm Tony Garcia. So I remember coding these fallaway platforms. These are less shitty than my other fallaway platforms because they actually have a telegraph. Right. Um, and that's sort of rule number one. When uh, man, I had the rocket pack on. Wow, I don't, even, I don't even remember those guys. Really? Yeah, those little six-legged alien guys. They were kind of a distant cousin of the, the ones from the desert level. They're similar to the ones that were in uh, level six, the Canal City, that yeah. were cut. Those aren't the guys, but they're similar to what the guys we saw in the Canal, or that used to be in the Canal City. I can't believe I'm doing a platforming segment with the rocket pack on. I am going to get fucked. No, see, look at that. You made that jump so easily because you had the rocket pack on. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it on. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it on. But uh, oh, by the way, I just wanted to say, on behalf of me and everybody listening, it was so nice of you to come down just to do this one episode. Exactly what I did. Because we had such success with the last couple that you drove all the way. But this is not the same recording session. Right. Nice one, right. No. Yeah. We need Completely to, different. We need to keep up the uh, uh, fact, not illusion. Fact that we are doing these all. Of the time. Oh look, that's nicer than the game. Oh, you didn't even have any. You had like four enemies in between the last vendor and this vendor. Oh man! All right. Oh, I kind of remember this segment. Um, Mark Cerny designed this segment. Okay. And uh, uh, I remember this segment because one of my first responsibilities as a junior designer was to take Mark Cerny's graph paper map and put it in Illustrator. Got it. Because that was the kind of shit you do when you were a junior <laughs> designer. And, you know, it, I needed to learn Illustrator, so it was probably a good thing that I did, but, uh, you know, not the most exciting work. Um, oh, now, these, these, by the way, these little trains here my, are my favorite flying cars. I was about to say, I don't see the normal flying cars, uh, just these trains that are moving around. Yeah, I think Lingush did a really good job with these flying trains. They, they work really well. Where am I, I think I'm supposed to go so in this segment, we actually do show you where you're supposed to go with the levitator. Sort of. I mean, it's kind of in the horizon of where you're supposed to be aiming towards. Yeah, we. it probably would have been better if we'd done some camera work to aim it correctly, but we never do camera work in the Rarely, yeah. It was doing 
camera manipulation was a huge pain in the ass for some reason. Like, I, I recall it always being off limits. Yeah. I mean, maybe we, we would normally blame the guy who does the camera for that kind of thing. But he was beyond reproach. Yeah. Perfect in every way. Oh, the I crabs. Remember. I remember the crabs. <laughs> some giant enemy crabs. Ha 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 ha. Let me hit its weak point for massive damage. It's, it's a funny joke even now. Don't get me started. But look at Torso. <laughs> Without violating the rule, uh, that was a really sad press conference. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> yes, so the crabs. Uh, I don't think we've seen the crabs before this level, have we? No, that was the first time we saw them. So what's... um? I probably should have been paying attention to the cutscenes, but why are we here in Smog? Um... The, they're shipping proto pets out of here, I think. That's Got why it. there's all the crates. Got it, okay. That's what's going on at this facility. I like knowing the stories behind our facilities. And this was one of the levels that I didn't play too much in production. Right, because uh, you had to focus on your levels. Well, it was one of the last levels that we did. Yeah. So, I mean, all the other levels I ended up playing a lot of because when things weren't as hectic, I was able to play the game. But at the end, things were always hectic. So the levels that went in uh, last... I didn't get to play very much at all. Don't worry, you're not missing anything. <laughs> I fucking phoned it in. Uh, I just did. I didn't have enough time to make both levels good. Right. And uh, clearly, I didn't even have enough time to make one of them good. So, there you go. Although people online have said very nice things. Oh. oh. Why'd you stop hovering? I thought I was over it. Uh, um, oh, you're all the way back. Wow. So people online have said very nice things about the other levels that I'm embarrassed about. So at least, at least some people like them. But not probably not about this level, is what you're saying. This level is probably not going to get even those nice sympathy comments. God, I... <sighs> <sighs> this is a weird traversal segment because um, there's really not a lot of enemies here. I mean, there's two enemies that are, you're going to encounter over there. Right. But uh, usually we put more uh, enemy setups even in the traversal sections. Just to break it up, yeah. yeah. Or, or at least crates. Right. Uh, and we don't even have the crates. It's Whoa! A, it's a fairly sparse uh, setup here. Good job, Mike. Sideswipe him with a fucking train. Oh. oh, I have the bouncer. Yeah, you do. I do love the bouncer. It's a great weapon. Great weapon for all occasions. Hey, wait, that's my lightning effect. Where? That, that one? Right there. Uh, entirely possible. Actually, Remember, no. I'm sorry. Well... When I say mine, I mean I stole it. From Roberto. Right, yeah. Right. From the Tesla coil. Right. But uh, uh, at this level was... Uh, I was talking about how much that other level, the uh, I think it was Dabo, uh, or Boldon, or no, uh, whatever. That level with the squirrels was yeah. was on borrowed time. Uh -huh. This level was even more on borrowed time. So and basically, uh, they said, okay, Mike, we need someone to, you know, try to try to make this level finish. Right. Right. And I was like, well, what kind of resources do I have? And they're like, well, not much. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Uh, oh, wow, okay. Uh, dude, the bouncer didn't work. It would have if you gave it a second. Oh, swarmer generators! Have we had swarmer generators? Before? Yeah, we had them in uh, in the Canal City. Oh, so we talked about them already. No, we didn't talk about them. We had them, but we never talked about them. This the uh... oh man, that is not the right thing to happen when I push those buttons. Um, so uh, uh, swarmer generators, sort of a old school ratchet uh, uh, thing. Oh, look, oh. we got a little cutscene explaining what you're supposed to do here. I had to wire this thing up, yeah, because it was impossible for you to know what you were doing. Look, you can't see where you're supposed to go. <laughs> right, let's see where I'm going. I'm going up there? Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to cut that out. Uh, I, think, uh, I think probably for the best. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, swarmer generators. Uh, Yes, yeah, so let's, let's talk about Swarmer Generators. They, they're a very uh, uh, interesting addition to the enemy set because um, they make you change which enemy you're prioritizing mm -hmm. from, uh, from the individual Swarmers to the Generator, which is not something that, that we do a lot. 
like the the entire so when you're when you're learning how to design ratchet segments uh, what they teach you is the most important thing is uh, the player has to think about what guy he wants to attack next mm -hmm. uh, and me talking is just ruining my chances of beating this uh, so anytime an enemy could change who you were prioritizing that was you know, for the for the good I'm going to change it to click select wheel. How do I do it? Like the click select menu. <sighs> okay, next time I have a level, you're going to play. <laughs> Let's get some mini turrets out here. Wow, the Sheepinator's... A little tough. Um, it gets super good once you upgrade it. It's sort of the thing. Once you upgrade the shoot, if you put the time in. Fuck. All right. Um, I'm way back here at the beginning again. I'm having a great time. Great time. Are you having a great time because of Schadenfreude? Is that the... Well, I mean, in the last level here we were talking about you were trying to delight in me failing. But I was still having a great time, despite my failures, which were not many. Here you are, failing far worse than I did, and just not having a great time. And it's, it's, it's sweet revenge to me. Do, Mike, do you want me to do this for you? Would you? Uh... Thank you, Tony. No problem. Uh, so I, I just gave Tony the controller. And I'm just going to pop a beer. This, um... I don't even know what to say anymore. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just going to talk a little bit about ratchet setup design. Sure. Because I know I could talk about that. Let's go. Let's yeah. hear it. So, um, as I was mentioning, when you're a designer and you're learning about ratchet setup design, your your main concern is which enemy is the player going to attack next. Uh -huh. So when you when you create a uh, an enemy setup, you create the, the the terrain in the level and the, uh, the the choice of which enemies you put in there to make the player have to ask and answer different questions. Okay. Right. So uh, in this in this setup, for example. We, we show you the crab and then intro the, the robot torso, right? And so the player sees the crab, but then when the torso starts shooting at him, now he has to make an interesting choice about which guy to fight. Right. Um, in the case of, you know, if you have, uh, this is mostly on flat ground, but in the levels where we have ledges or gaps, um, the player has to make choices of, do I go against the guy who's right here or the guy who's way over there? And that also influences your weapon choices and that's what makes ratchet combat interesting. Right. So uh, anything that we could add to the enemies to make the choice of which guy you want to attack more interesting was sort of a win. Right. And so that's why, for example, the robot torso guys are so interesting is they could go fly out over gaps, right? Which is something that most other enemies can't do. Uh, in the case of swarmer generators, they, uh, you, know, you know what to do when you see swarmers, but as soon as you see the generator, it changes everything up. So it certainly makes it much more interesting. Well, at least we didn't close up the force field on this thing. Right? How could anybody not like the bouncer, Mike? I don't know. It's so good. What kind of horrible person do you have to be to not like the bouncer? A pretty horrible person, I think. Uh, I wish I remembered who it was who said it so I could call them out. <laughs> I'm sure they'll know. That's that's even better. Yeah, you know what? You know who you are. That's right. You hate the bouncer. And, and you're, and as, you're far wrong. As, as far as Tony's concerned, fuck you. As far as the world's concerned. <laughs> Is this worth dropping an F bomb for? I think so. Okay. I think so. So I shouldn't leave that out. No. Oh, you are doing way better at this level than I am. I'm pretty good. Yeah. I don't know if you know, Mike. I'm pretty good at Ratchet and Clank. From what I understand, uh, you you are, you are a hero and have to live up to that. <laughs> That's right. 